It's Monday, and that means Mock Draft Day. It's a beauty hall, running free. We saw it in second and ten. He's going to score. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and you heard me right. We're going to be doing a full seven-round mock draft today, so buckle in. This might be a little bit of a long one. We're going to be using the PFF Mock Draft Simulator because I feel like they're bored. Their picks, their trades, their, all of those things are more realistic than um, other places. They use the point system relatively well. Their big board is relatively well uh, positioned well and kind of in a grand with what, with what I like to think the big board will look like. I like how they evaluate uh, positional needs for teams because I think a lot of these websites look at the team's positional need as is like, oh, what's the one-year thing? And I think GMs are looking more in two-year chunks, not maybe what we need this year, but maybe what do we need next year and how can we address for that now? And so I like the way that they tend to do their picks, especially in the earlier parts of the draft where you get the most impactful players. So... Brace yourself. We're going to be switching over to that uh, screen right now. It is white. It is bright. You've been warned. Welcome to the draft. We're going to hop in. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to do a mock trade with the Green Bay Packers for Aaron Rodgers. We're going to go with what I think the, pa the, the trade package is going to be. And I ultimately think that the way that it works out and the way that it plays out is a second round pick this year, a conditional fourth round pick next year that can go all the way up to a one based on uh, play time and a bunch of different other conditions. We're going to put a bunch of conditions on the 2024 pick. And then wide receiver Corey Davis with us bringing in Alan Lazard. We're going to want to get rid of Corey Davis um, uh, for whatever we can. And by sending Corey Davis as a part of the trade package, it lowers the 2024 from a third to a fourth. And the Green Bay Packers also get a player that they were interested in at the deadline last year. Don't forget that they called the New York Jets about Corey Davis. So it is a player that they are interested or that they have shown interest in. And it gives them another weapon that one can be a, a, a facsimile of what Alan Lazard was um, in Green Bay on a cheaper deal than what Alan Lazard got for one year. And because they're accumulating a second round pick this year, it gives them an option to maybe also look at getting a Corey Davis replacement in this year's draft as well. They have Christian Watson, they have Romeo Dubs, and both of those guys have a ton of upside but still need some work. Um, but this gives them the opportunity to go wherever they want really at 43. They still have 45, so they have two second round picks where they can really go in any direction. And Corey Davis gives them some immediate help in the wide receiver room, um, giving Jordan Love as many uh, options as possible. So there's the trade that I think is ultimately going to end up happening, and let's start the draft. And the Jets obviously pick at 13, and we see uh, a situation that would really, really intrigue me if the New York Jets played it out this way, or if it played out this way for the New York Jets. So we see the quarterbacks go 1-3-4. And eight uh, makes a ton of sense. Jalen Carter fell all the way to seven. But my favorite player in this draft, Peter Skaronsky, is available here at 13. And while the Jets absolutely would be super interested in taking Peter Skaronsky right here at 13, the fact that within the top 12 picks, only one tackle was taken is a bit interesting. But we did lose our second round pick. And I think it is more important to recuperate that second round pick than it is to take a player that might not start at the tackle position in the first round. I want impactful players. And so while I love Peter Skaronsky, I don't think he wins out the job at any of the four offensive line positions that he can play right away in the sense of I don't think he beats out Dwayne Brown or Mekhi Becton at the tackle spots immediately. And I don't think he's going to beat out Elijah Vera Tucker or Lakin Tomlinson. He might be able to beat out Lakin Tomlinson. But I am uh, kind of banking on Lakin Tomlinson going back to what he was looked like in San Francisco. And if that happens, you just spent a 13th overall pick on a backup. Now, he would for sure probably start next year, um, not in his sophomore year, and you would probably bump Mekhi Becton back to the left side. Peter Skronsky would slot into the right side. <laughs> or even you could move on from Lakin Tomlinson after this year, move Elijah Vera Tucker back to the left side, and then put Peter Skronsky in at right guard. And that would make a ton of sense in that in, in that world, but I think recuperating the second round pick is the most important thing. So let's see what teams are interested in trading with the New York Jets to come up and how willing are we uh, to fall back. So 
there's a lot of options here, and I don't want to get out of the first round um, entirely. So that un- eliminates Indy, Vegas, Miami, Chicago, and Denver. I don't want to fall as far back as Kansas City at 31, um, but I also don't want to fall back uh, just to 16, 17, or 18. So Jacksonville to Cincinnati is where we're looking at when it comes to falling uh, in the draft. Um in my eyes, I think Dallas is probably the team that would be most interested in for me, um, just because I wouldn't want to run into a Jacks. I, I don't want to help Jacksonville or Cincinnati in the AFC, um, particularly. So let's go 13 uh, for 26, obviously, is the starting point. Let's pull up our calculator and let's do the point system. The 13th overall pick is worth 11 uh, 1,150 points, while the 26th pick is worth 700 points. So we need to make up 450 points. The 58th pick is worth 320 points. Uh, we are definitely taking their second round pick, but that would leave us paying them 130 points worth of capital, and that's just not worth it. So for them to come up, we're going to take their third as well, which is worth 140 points. Um leaving the New York Jets under, like, minus 10 points, um, and that gives, it's exactly what we want. We want Dallas paying a premium to come up to the 13th pick, so we're going to accumulate another second-round pick and another third-round pick for Dallas to come up, and whatever player they pick at 13, we wouldn't have to worry about them at all or meeting up with them until the Super Bowl. This makes a ton of sense for me, and it's accepted, so let's resume the draft and let's see how it plays out. And boom, we're here at 26, and it plays out absolutely magnificently for the New York Jets. Anton Harrison is still here on the board, a tackle that uh, we could definitely take if we wanted to. Um, totally makes a ton of sense. Kalijah Kansi, also another player that I would be super interested in and bulking up that interior of the defensive line. We don't have an interior defensive lineman yet, and so... Ooh, this is really, really interesting. I think I'm going to go Kalijah Kansi here. I think the value for Kalijah Kansi at 26 is just way too good. Hope that maybe one of the tackles that I really like is available here in the second round. Um, And you know what? I didn't expect them to be this far down. Luke Whipler is here at 58, which is the pick that we got from the Cowboys, and I'm I'm taking Luke Whipler. We don't have a center right now. We're interested in Ben Jones. Luke Whipler from Ohio State is a Jets fan. Let's bring a Jets fan home. We're taking Luke Whipler here, and now we're solidifying not just the interior of the defensive line, but center for a very, very, very long time. This is the number 74 pick. This is the New York Jets' own pick, and I really want to look at, you know, the whole kind of, the whole board of what's on or what's available here. And I'm really leaning towards a guy like a Jamie Robinson out of Florida state here. I really like this pick. The New York Jets still have Jordan Whitehead on the roster. And I think the reason he's still on the roster is because if one of these safeties that maybe the team really likes falls to them in the draft, they can move on from his contract with no complaints and they can move Chuck Clark to strong safety because I think the plan right now is Chuck Clark at free safety, Jordan Whitehead at strong safety or vice versa. Um, And then you have Ashton Davis, Will Parks and uh, Tony Adams as your rotational background guys in that situation. But if you were to get Jamie Robinson, I think this gives you the opportunity to one create a backup position, like a backup player. I'm sorry for Michael Carter the second because we don't really have a backup slot corner and Jamie can play there but also give us an option outside of just Tony Adams and Chuck Clark or whatever at free safety so I'm going Jamie Robinson remembering that we have the 90 pick from the Dallas Cowboys trade and this is where we're going to go the tackle in the draft if they are still available and if there's any of the guys that we like um, at this position. So let's look at the offensive tackle room. And unfortunately, the guy that I was hoping that would fall to 90 has already been taken, Blake Freeland. And outside of that, I don't really love any of these guys this high up. So we're not going to go tackle here. We got to make sure that we're taking 
that we're not reaching for a player. And you know what? With the Jets at 90, we do still need a linebacker. And Dorian Williams here makes a ton of sense. We need to start solidifying that Sam linebacker role. I think that bringing in Dorian Williams to compete with the Jamie and Sherwood for that linebacker three role makes a ton of sense because I think this team believes that Jamie and Sherwood is the CJ Mosley replacement. Uh, Quincy Williams seems like he's going to be the will linebacker for this team moving forward. So we're going to take Dorian Williams to be a competition for Jamie and Sherwood for the Sam. But also if we do, you know, look at him as the replacement there makes a ton of sense. We can look at it that way. So we're back on the board at 112 and we uh, have a couple of needs that we still need to address while we still have, um, while we still have uh, Carl Lawson on the team, I don't know if he's going to be here long term. So edge is maybe a position that we look at. We do still need a running back. Brees Hall is still injured and is probably not going to be ready for the beginning of the season. Um, we do still need a tackle um, in this position as well. And I seem I think like some of these tackles are a little bit of a reach here. I, I would look at probably like a Warren McClendon, a McClendon Curtis, a, you know, these kinds of guys, a Wanya Morris in the next pick, then maybe reaching for one of these guys right now. Um, but a guy that I, I really think can have a really in, uh, instant impact for this team right away is running back Rashawn Johnson out of Texas. I feel like his value at running back is insanely high. We do need the running back to solidify that room. And because he played behind Bajan Robinson, he didn't get enough spotlight and enough uh, love as he should have. And in the fourth round, taking a, a guy like this that I think is very, very explosive to partner with the running back room of Michael Carter and um, Bam Knight while Brees gets healthy is only going to be beneficial for this team. So I'm taking Rashawn Johnson here in the fourth, and that makes a ton of sense. And for these next two pick, we're going to hit the trenches. We're going offensive line. We're going defensive line. It's edge or tackle here. No matter what, we need to get the depth here, and there are still are a ton of tackles here. Um, so I'm not going to necessarily reach for a tackle right now. Let's go and get an edge player um, and see if there's any of these guys that maybe we like. K.J. Henry out of Clemson makes uh, some sense. He really, really did uh, show up in his uh, last year. Very, very good um, kind of rotational back-end guy. Um, Colby Wooden, another guy that I kind of like in these late parts of the draft. But we're just going to take the best player available. The, the PFF says KJ Henry is the best player available. That's what we're going to do. Let's hop into turbo speed to get to our pick as quickly as possible. And let's see what's available in the tackle room. We're probably going to take it. And Asim Richards makes a ton of sense. I like me some Asim Richards. He was at the Senior Bowl and... He's definitely a project guy, but has some upside. We're going to take a Seam Richards here, come back into turbo mode, finish out the draft, see how it went for us, and then get your guys' reactions for the draft. So we start by trading out and, or trading for Aaron Rodgers by giving up our second round pick and a 2024 fourth round conditional pick and wide receiver Corey Davis. Then we trade out of 13 and recoup a second and a third round pick from the Dallas Cowboys to come up 10 spots. And we go and still get the guy that I probably would have taken at 13 at 26 in Kalijah Kansi. Fantastic pickup. You can slot into the interior of the defensive line and really give us some depth. Um, and then in the second round, we take Luke Whipler with the Dallas Cowboys pick. This is a fantastic pick. Even if we go out and get Ben Jones, sitting Luke Whipler behind Ben Jones for one year for me makes a ton of sense. In the third round, we get Jamie Robinson uh, bringing in talent to that safety room. And in the, in the, again, in the third round with a Dallas pick, we go Dorian Williams bringing in another body <coughs> um, for the linebacker room. In the fourth round, we go and get a running back to really solidify that room and really help out our offense and our new quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. And then we hit the trenches hard in the fifth and the sixth round. KJ Henry, edge rusher out of Clemson, and then Asim Richards tackle out of North Carolina. PFF gives us a B plus grade. Here are the grades for all of the picks that we made. What do you guys think of this draft? Let me know in the comment section below by leaving your sacrifice to the algorithm gods. And last but not least, go Jets.